Welcome to Daily Devotion with Ken Gurley. Devotions designed to inspire you on your daily walk with God. Here's your host, Ken Gurley. Well, friends, I can't believe it's already Friday. It is Friday. Where did this week go? It's been a momentous week in the lives of so many people, in all of our lives, actually. A week that will never be replaced, eat filled with days like pearls on a strand. This is the day the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Because it, because it is, because it is the one we have. And let's make today count for the kingdom. So glad to see you. This is the Daily Devotion family. We get here. We get here Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Central, and we just lift one another up and act like each other. Here we go. That you are the cat's meow. You are the dog's bark. You are the bird's chirp. (laughs) I don't know what I just said, but that's what you are. That's the way we feel about you, and I'm glad you're here. And thank you for being a part of this. Looking forward to a great Palm Sunday weekend. Uh, I'm in Pearland this Sunday looking forward to be home and and see the great saints of God there. And I pray you have a wonderful Palm Sunday weekend wherever you are. I want to talk to you about the great beyond and specifically voices from that area we called we call the great beyond. How many names have we given it? Beulah land, the place called yonder. We've given it so many names. Uh, One of the names that have been given for the afterlife is the great beyond. Uh, For generations, people, mostly charlatans, I would say, have promoted the idea that they could communicate, that they could hear voices from beyond and they could communicate with departed souls and desperate people, desperate people alive on earth, grieving unresolved issues, uh, have paid fortunes to these people to hear a voice from beyond. But I hear other voices. I hear amazing voices. I, I, if you want a voice from beyond, what about Revelation 1? Fear not, I am the first and the last. I'm he that liveth. I was dead. Behold, I'm alive forevermore. You want to know who has the keys. He's got the keys of hell and death. And uh, that's a great voice from beyond. I, 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 I wonder sometimes, though, have you ever wished, have you ever wished, Lisa, Thomas, Vicki, Greta, have you ever wished that you could just rewind the tape? Take the hands of time back just a little bit to recapture a moment that you didn't, you didn't realize how valuable it was at the time to maybe rewind the tape and to remove a word that was said, to remove an action. I think this is why the story of Hezekiah resonates. When Hezekiah's predicted death, remarkable recovery, is found in scripture, it's not found once, it's not found twice, it's found three times. Because I believe it fulfills some deep longing within us. The desire to go back, the desire to turn the hands of the clock back. You remember the story when Isaiah told the king that he was healed, Hezekiah asked for a sign. and That sign was the shadow of the sundial. It could move forward, it could move back, Isaiah said. Which do you prefer? He said to go forward is a light thing. That's the expected thing. That's the anticipated thing. But oh, if it could go backwards. And that's what happened. Time marches relentlessly forward, never backwards. But if we could turn the hands of time back just for a little while to reclaim some thoughtless words, some wasted opportunity, some sin of omission or commission that would make our lives much bearable in the present. As Thomas Carlyle, the Scottish historian, wrote to his departed wife, Jane, oh, that I had you yet 
far five minutes by my side that I could tell you all who hasn't wished that just a few minutes that I could say something that should have been said some word that was left unspoken some thought that should have been shared yeah let the shadow of that sundial go backwards I've been with families I've been with families this week what a week what an amazing week this has been Families that have walked close to that shadow in the valley of the shadow of death, you, you see them wrestling with Father Time, clinging to their loved ones, fighting for their loved ones, clinging and hoping and praying and believing. And haven't we all been there? Allison, we've been there. We've just been there. I, I, I've watched doctors and nurses countless times through the decades doing war, doing war with the death angel but thanks be to God who gives us the victory and this is the season we're moving into and Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday the season that there's one who has the keys of it all and he's given us the victory that we need and we give our God so much praise but if we could reclaim that moment and say, I wish, I wish I just had a moment to say something to the one who's gone beyond. I, I, I wish just a voice, just a sentence, just. I, if you want a glimpse into the great beyond, I, I don't think you need a palm reader and I don't think you need a psychic. I, I heard an advertisement this week that our psychics give you the best readings. And if you're not satisfied with our psychics, it's a money back guarantee. I don't know. I don't know. You need to go to the book of life if you want a glimpse into the great beyond. Yes, because only the Bible speaks to the innermost longings and desires and destinies within mankind. In scripture, I can think of several instances where people have been spoken to, that voices from beyond have come. And I want to, I want to share a few of those with you. Could I, Rose, I just want to share a few of those with you. I, um, I've had people ask me, I, I don't know why I'm saying this. I, I just, I've had people ask me, they said, Pastor, do you believe that those who go on before us can somehow communicate with us? Not in the sense of a seance, not in the sense of, um, of a, a direct word, but scripture says there is a voice from behind saying this is the way walking in it. I believe there's echoes of voices, that there are memories of things that people said, what they stood for, how they lived, that come back to us all the time. I, I want to give you some scriptural examples of voices from beyond. Could I do that? First of all, uh, is the convicting voice. All of these begin with a C. I'll help you stay in line with this, a convicting voice. This is the first voice from beyond that we hear in scripture, and it's found in Genesis 4. The Lord said to Cain, where's Abel, your brother? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? Because I hear a voice, the voice of thy brother's blood crieth to me from the ground. Cain, the first murderer, slew the righteous Abel from jealousy, and the voice of the departed Abel is crying out from beyond. It's the voice of conviction, the voice of conviction reaching to us. Do you remember Edgar Allan Poe's macabre story, The Telltale Heart? His villain had murdered a man, hit him in the house, only to be faced with the pounding heartbeat of the man that he had slain. There's a, there's a voice that extends beyond the grave. That was Abel's voice crying out. It's the voice of conviction. It, it, it's like that a, accusatory finger that wrote on the wall there in Belshazzar's palace, and it points to what we could have done, should have done, might have been. It's a voice of conviction. That's not the reason Jesus came. 
He didn't come to point guilt's finger at you. He didn't come to make you feel ashamed and regretful. No, he came to point people to Calvary. Hebrews 12 says to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. See that you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, how much more should we not escape if we turn from him that speaks from heaven? It's a convicting voice from beyond. I, I don't know, Donna, Kurt, I don't know. I, I thank God for convicting voices. I thank God that I can hear that voice. I, I never want to get beyond the reach of that voice. I was, I was um, praying early one morning a few days ago, and and I, I felt that, you know, Scripture says when you bring your gift to the altar and you realize you have aught in your heart. It was one of those moments that my conscience twinged. The words that I had spoken in jest a day or so before came back to haunt me. And I thought that was really not the right thing to say. Have you ever had that happen? Charles, Dawn, you just had it happen where you realize I shouldn't have said that. That wasn't wise. And I couldn't let the sun rise without reaching out to someone and saying, I hope that I didn't offend you with what I said. I, I always want to hear that convicting voice from beyond. The Lord Jesus Christ does convict, but he never condemns. You remember, louder than the voice of conviction is his voice of compassion. When people were crying, stone her, stone her. In the dust of the ground, he wrote with a finger, he that's without sin, he said, let him cast the first stone, go, sin, so, sin no more. The Lord only convicts to bring about a lasting change, never to put you down. The voice from beyond was the voice of Abel's blood, it's a convicting voice. Here's the second voice from beyond. It's a constant voice. It's one of the most, Miriam, Tony, this is one of the most curious passages in all of Scripture. <laughs> that godly Nazarite, that last judge of Israel, Samuel, was dead. King Saul could not get anyone to tell him what to do. No prophet, no ephod-clad priest, no oracle, no sure word from the Lord. So he turned to the accursed witch of Endor. I, I don't know what you think about this passage. When I tell you scholars are split on this passage, they are split. Um, we read that this witch of Endor conjured up the spirit of Samuel. And um, I, as I read it, I, I sort of get the impression she was just as surprised as Saul. I, I, <laughs> I, think, I don't think she knew what she was doing. And uh, about a half the scholars that you read after say this was a demonic, familiar spirit that she conjured up and uh, to say whatever she wanted to say. And, uh, and I, can, I can see the evidence for that. Theologically, I can see the evidence for that. And, uh, but then others say, you know, I think God just surprised everybody and let Samuel show up. Saul perceived it was Samuel, perceived it was his voice, and he spoke the truth, what was about to happen at Gilboa the next day. Um, I don't know. But here's what Samuel is purported to have said. This is scripture. Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord's departed from thee and has become thine enemy? And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me, for the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of your hand. He's given it to David. Because you didn't obey, obey the voice of the Lord. He, you, you didn't execute the Lord's wrath upon Amalek. And therefore the Lord has done this thing unto thee. 
No change of character beyond the grave in Samuel. What Samuel said before he died is what he said after he died. It's a voice. It's a constant voice. I think that's what I want you to know is that the voice that speaks after the grave is the same voice that speaks before the grave. That the voice from beyond is constant. Let this be learned here. Let, let this be learned here. There's no second chance uh, in the great beyond. Who we are, our character is fixed here. It's fixed now. And who we are now is who we shall be beyond the grave. Job said, oh, that you would hide me in the grave, that you would keep me secret until the wrath passed, and that you, then you would just appoint me a set time, then remember me. If a man dies, shall he live again? If all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come, there will be a great change. There will be a change of body. There will be a resurrected body. But there will not be a change of character. Who we are before the grave does not change in some fictitious purgatory or limbo. The voice from beyond is who we are right now. That's why it's important. Don, Diane, that's why it's so important. Now is the day of salvation. Don't wait until it is too late. Well, we don't talk like this anymore, do we? And maybe. Maybe it's all of the, the death and passing and funerals that I've been associated with this week that's got me thinking of the great beyond. Don't wait until it's too late because who you are now and the character that is being formed now, your wedding garment is being formed and fashioned one thread at a time right now. Who you are and shall be, there is a constancy there. Do everything, do everything, knowing that the beyond is coming. It's a convicting voice, it's a concern, it's a constant voice. Here's the third one, it's a concern voice. If you could hear the voices from the great beyond, you would find how highly concerned they are about you. Some Bible scholars like to relegate this into just a mere parable. I think it exceeds that because you don't find people's names in our Lord's parables. But here you find the name of the rich man named Lazarus, a rich man that we call Dives, and a poor man named Lazarus. Both die. The rich man goes into the lake of fire, poor man into paradise, and the rich man cries out to Father Abraham, I, would you send somebody? to my father's house. I've got five brothers. I don't want them to come where I am. Abraham said, you know what? If they won't hear the voices of Moses and the prophets, they're not going to hear a voice, though it comes from the grave. But listen to the concern in that rich man's voice. A concern. I think if you could put your ear to the rail of the great beyond, you would be shocked at the concern in the voice that you hear. The concern of family members who are saying, oh, my family's got to be saved. The concern, the concern of people that have gone into the great beyond for those left behind here. The greatest potential witness for Jesus is not alive with us right now under the sun. They are in the great beyond, crying out for their five brothers. It was years ago I read of a commercial film by Yule Brenner, the late famous actor. It was filmed months before his death from lung cancer. It was on the first anniversary of his passing that the commercial aired, and it was entitled A Voice from the Grave. And Brenner admitted that smoking had caused the cancer, and he asked people to quit. Whether any did, I can't say, but if those who have gone on could speak, you would hear the voice of concern like never before. Drug addicts would cry out for you to change. People that were sexually promiscuous would cry out for you to change. Revilers, blasphemers, murderers, gossipers 
would scream and cry out for change. You would hear the concerned voices of mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles and cousins and sons and daughters in a cacophonous chorus saying, reconsider your ways. Oh, I know this is heavy. I know it is. Because I, you would hear, if you could hear the voices from beyond, you would hear a convicting voice. You would hear, you would hear a concerned voice. But here's the fourth one. And this is what I want to leave you with today. It's a comforting voice. Because you see, as much as parents and mothers and fathers and, and um, rich men and all of these people would cry out from beyond, there's only one voice from beyond who can really help you, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Scripture has a unique way of identifying the population of the world, those in heaven those in earth, those under the earth. Everybody above, in, and under praise one, the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said in Philippians 2, wherefore God is also highly exalted and given the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Things in heaven, earth, under earth. Everything bows a knee to Jesus Christ. Everything bows a knee. Why? Revelation 5 said, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy? And there was no man in heaven, in earth, under earth, able to open the book. And John said, I wept much because nobody was found. But one of the elders taps him on the shoulder and said, stop your crying. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book. He's worthy. He's worthy. His voice is so comforting. To John, he said, fear not. I am the first. I am the last. I've got the keys to death and the grave. To Paul, who wanted to know the name of God on the Damascus road, he said, I am Jesus. What do you have to need, need of today? Fear not, fear not. Are troubles coming against you? Is the ship of your life tossing and turning? Are you in the midst of great winds and waves? And can't you hear a comforting voice from beyond saying, it is I, be not afraid. Or are you like the apostle Paul fighting the one who can bring you the peace that you long for? To you, to every one of you, I say, only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Only he can. Only he, that voice from beyond, that comforting voice, can say, fear not. I am the first. I am the last. I am he that liveth, was dead, but behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things that shall be hereafter. This is the commanding voice of comfort coming into your life, saying, I've got this. It's going to be all right. Don't fear the voices from beyond because there is an overriding voice, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the voice with the sound of many waters. He's the one that is speaking to you right now from beyond. And he is saying, it's going to be okay. I'm going to see you through. I'm going to walk with you through this thing. Let me just close with this story. I don't know why it came to me. Do you remember Jesus going into Jericho and Bartimaeus cries out? And um, the Bible says Jesus stood still. And we, we read, blind Bartimaeus left his beggar's garment behind and began sort of a blind man's buff to get to Jesus. I suspect Jesus had to keep talking because that blind man was following the voice. I, I wish we could have our ears, our spiritual hearing exercise. 
to hear that voice from beyond saying, it is I, be not afraid, and that we could follow after that voice. I believe there's a perfect symmetry in Scripture that just as God appeared as the walking voice in the garden, here at the end of time, we hear the voice of him speaking again. This day and age that we're in right now, there's a voice from beyond. It's a voice of comfort and is calling out to you. Follow that voice. Follow that voice with everything inside of you. Be sensitive. Exercise your senses to discern between that voice and the multitude of voices in the land. And there's a voice calling from beyond. Forgive me this Friday. I just, my heart is full. It's been a week praying for a lot of people. And thank you for lifting up others in your prayers. We've got, we've got some great days ahead. And I pray that this weekend is so blessed for you. I pray that people come back to the Lord this weekend. And that God does something amazing in your life. You're the greatest. Like and follow on Facebook, share, YouTube, subscribe. Look forward to seeing you in just a few moments over on kycc.com. Join us over there at 745 Central AM and PM. God bless. May the Lord be with you. Thank you for being a part of this great family. Thank you for sharing in daily devotion with Ken Gurley. We pray this ministry has been a source of encouragement and strength to you. Please be mindful that your financial support enables us to meet with you each day. To give a donation or connect with us, visit our website at kengurley.com. There you will also find the latest books, podcasts, and resources. Blessed, 90 Days to Change Your World is Pastor Gurley's latest book. You can get your copy of this life-changing book at kengurley.com. May God's favor rest on you in every way until we meet again.